Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and Gurudev. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for giving your valuable association and time. So now I would like to hand over the call to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gyana Jana Salakaya Chaksu Um Namitam Yenatas My Shri Gurvena Maha Shri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Staptitam Yen Utuli Swayam Rupa Kidam Mayam Dadati Swa Kudanti Kanu Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamini Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaudavani Pacharini Nirvise Sunya Vadi Pasyatya De Satarine Panchakalpa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Pehidvacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadakar Sivasiri Gaur Bhaktarinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <laughs> so put the verse on the board. <laughs> yes, okay. And uh, we need maybe one or two volunteers to read the purport. The purport is quite lengthy. So somebody can come through, but not now. Not yet. We'll go back. Where you're going? Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. Just keep that up. Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Kim Jama Bistri Birvedham Sankrava Savatra Yagnikai. Karma beer, vatrayam protai, whom the vibhudas yasa. Translation mm -hmm. A civilized human being has three births. The first birth is by a pure father and mother, and this birth is by semen. The next birth takes place when one is initiated by the spiritual master, and this birth is called Savitra. The third birth, called Yagnika, takes place when one is given the opportunity to worship Lord Vishnu. Despite the opportunities for attaining such births, even if one gets the lifespan of a demigod, if one does not actually engage in the service of the Lord, everything is useless. Similarly, one's activities may be mundane or spiritual, but they're useless if they are not meant for satisfying the Lord. So a nice, clear reader who knows Sanskrit also. Somebody who can chant the Sanskrit along with the verse, along with the purple. Okay, someone yeah. read. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, Padma Sati Mata Ji, you raise hand, right? Yes, Mata Ji. Should I read all the purport or should I stop no, it? Can, after? You, can, uh, you can read uh, until the next verse. First so. paragraph, okay, okay, Mata Ji. The, the word Saukra Janma means taking birth by seminal discharge. Animals can take their birth in this way too. However, a human being can be reformed from the Saukra Janma as recommended in the Vedic civilization. Before the birth takes place or before father and mother unite, there is a ceremony called Garbhadana Samskara, which must be adopted. This Garbhadana Samskara is especially recommended for higher castes, especially the Brahmana caste. It is said in the Shastras, that if the Garbadan Samskar is not practiced among the higher caste, the entire family becomes Shudra. It is also stated that in this age of Kali, everyone is Shudra due to the absence of Garbadan Samskara. This is the Vedic system. According to Pancharatrika system, however, even though everyone is a Shudra due to the absence of Garbadan Samskara, if a person 
has but a little tendency to become krishna consciousness he could be given the chance to elevate himself to the transcendental platform of devotional service our krishna consciousness movement adopts this pancharatrika vidhi as advised by shri sanatana goswami who says yata kanchanatam yathi kamshyam kamshyam rasa vidhanatha tata diksha vidhanena vijatvam jayate nrinam thank you master Yes, Nina, Mata Ji can stand. Mata Ji, you raised hand. Okay. As bell metal, when mixed with mercury, is transformed to gold, a person, even though not golden pure, can be transformed into Brahmana or Dvija simply by the initiation process. It's in Hari Bhakti Vilasa 2.12. Thus, if one is initiated by a proper person, he can be accepted as twice born immediately. In our Krishna consciousness movement, we therefore offer the student his first initiation and allow him to chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. By chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra regularly and following the regulative principles, one becomes qualified to be initiated as, as a Brahmana because Unless one is a qualified Brahmana, he cannot be allowed to worship Lord Vishnu. This is called, uh, this is called Yagnika Janma. In our Krishna consciousness society, unless one is twice initiated, first by chanting Hare Krishna, second by the Gayatri Mantra, he's not allowed to enter the kitchen or deity room to execute duties. However, when one is elevated to the platform on which he can worship the deity, the previous birth does not matter. Chandalohi Dvija Shrishto Hari Bhakti Prayayana Hari Bhakti Vishnascha Dvijopi Swapachandanam Chanda Swapachadmaha Should I continue or somebody else would raise hand? Please continue until like the Lord Maharaj is said. Okay. Even if one is born in the family of a Chandala, if one engages in the devotional service of the Lord, he becomes the best of the Brahmanas. But even a Brahmana who is devoid of devotional service is on the level of the lowest dog eater. If a person is advanced in devotional service, it does not matter whether he was born in a Chandala family. He becomes purified as Sri Prahlad Maharaja said, Vipradvishad gunayuto arvinda nabha padarabinda vimukta vimukha chwapacham varishtam. It's in Bhagavatam 7.9.10. Hare Krishna. Tipani Mataji. Even if one is a Brahmana and is qualified with all the Brahminical qualities, qualifications, he is considered degraded if he is averse to worshiping the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But if a person is attached to the service of the Lord, he becomes glorified even if, even if he is born in a Chandala family. Indeed, such a Chandala can deliver not only himself, but all his family predecessors. Without devotional service, even a proud Brahmana cannot deliver himself. And what to speak of his family? In many instances in the Shastras, it is seen that even a Brahmana has become a Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra, Lecha, and non-Brahmana. And there are many instances of one being born a Kshatriya or Vaishya, or even lower, and in the 18th year, attaining elevation to the Brahminical platform by the process of initiation. Therefore, Narada Muni says, Yas yas ya lakshanam proktam pum shovarna bivyajakam yaranyatra pidrishtieta tate naivana te naiva vinir dishev. 
And that is from Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 11, Verse 35. Should I continue, Mataji? Continue. Okay. It is not a fact that because one is born in a Brahmana family, he is automatically a Brahmana. He has a better chance to become a Brahmana, but unless he meets all the Brahminical qualifications, he cannot be accepted as such. On the other hand, if the Brahminical qualifications are found in the person of a Shudra, he should immediately be accepted as a Brahmana. To substantiate this, there are many quotations from Bhagavatam, Mahabharat, Bharadwaja Samhita, and the Pancharatra, as well as many other scriptures. As far as the duration of life of the demigods concerning Lord Brahma, it is said, Sahasra Yuga Paryantam Aharyat Brahma Novitu Ratran Yuga Sahasrantam Tehoratra Vidojana Bhagavad Gita 8.17 Keep going. The duration of one day of Brahma is 1,000 years, I'm sorry, 1,000 times greater than the four Yugas, aggregating 4,320,000 years. And Brahma's night is, is of the same duration. Brahma lives for 100 years of such days and nights. The word vibhudash Vibhudaisha indicates that even if one gets a long lifespan, his lifespan is useless if he is not a devotee. A living entity is the eternal servitor of the Supreme Lord, and unless he comes to the platform of devotional service, his lifespan, good birth, glorious activities, and everything else are null and void. <laughs> Maum Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasnaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pacharine Gavise Sarsunya Bhari Vastyatya De Sitarine Dila Prabhupada Ki Jai So this verse, you can keep the, uh, keep the translation up on the screen please. Mm -hmm. This verse is um, very much uh, equipped to clear off a lot of misconceptions and understand misunderstandings about spiritual life, about position within society. Here it mentions in the translation that a civilized human being, now the word civilized has a very important part in giving the definition of these three types of verse. Because unless one is comes to the platform of accepting the bona fide spiritual master, he has not reached the human form of life. This is mentioned in the Shastras. Therefore, the scriptures say, Tad Vigyartam Eva, Tad Vigyartam Eva Abhigatshe. A big is a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a word that means must. Um, one has to understand that just simply by taking birth doesn't qualify one to become categories that categorizes a human being. What is the actual understanding is that one understands what is the actual goal of human life. And the goal of human life is first stated in the very beginning of the Sriman Bhagavan Atato Brahma Jigyasa. Jigyasa means to inquire. Now, in the human form of life, inquire into the area to understand what is the purpose of life. And the purpose of life is to make a solution to all problems of life and to attain our actual natural position as a supreme spiritual being. I mean, a, a spiritual being uh, supreme from everything else. In other words, everything mundane or everything uh, ordinary. 
So these three births, of course, the first birth everyone gets, everyone gets a mother and father. So in one verse in the Shastras, it says, in every birth, one gets a mother and a father. It doesn't matter what species of life that comes with animals and other forms of life. They also have mothers and fathers. But that doesn't qualify one for actual success in life. What qualifies one for success in life is the second birth. And that is mentioned here that one has to take shelter of and initiation from Krishna's representative, his empowered rep uh, representative, the bona fide spiritual master. And as this verse mentions that there are two phases to that uh, connection. One is Harinam initiation and one is called uh, Upanaya or Diksha initiation. And that is uh, one of these samskaras. Um, nowadays, it mentions also in the, in the purport that Kalo Sudra Sambhu one. Why is it say that everyone in this age is born in uh, Sudra? Everyone is born in Sudra because people don't follow the samskaras. That's why there are 16 samskaras. Samskaras means passages throughout life. And the first one is the uh, Garbhodana Samskara. Purifying the Garbha or the womb in order for a qualified child to enter into the womb. And that, that begins the process of purification. So then there's a birth samskara, that's janma samskara, and then there's, we all know the, uh, the first grains, the anaprast, like that. So there are 16 samskaras, but out of the 16, seven remain prominent, and everyone must perform those seven. And these are passages of life that take you from one stage of life to another. Therefore, the Shastras do say, and, and repeated here by Srila Prabhupada, everyone is born Sudra in this age because no one follows the samskaras. And Prabhupada particularly points to the Garbhodana samskara. And the Garbhodana samskara is very much important. In order to bring a good soul into the womb, because in this age, people just unite to have children without any, you know, any prefiguratory. In fact, sometimes children come by just by sexual contact without any, without any planning of any kind of, and then that kind of birth is called uh, Varna Sankara. What is Varna Sankara? Mm. Well, the world is full of Varna Sankara today. That means that there are souls that come in from different levels of existence, sometimes even from the lower planets. When one doesn't follow carefully the, these different samskaras, and any soul can enter into the womb. And you see, sometimes we see actually, and of course we have the example in Bhagavad Gita when Arjuna was encouraged to fight on behalf of religious principles by Sri Krishna. He gave a number of reasons why he didn't want to fight. And all of them were in line with Shastra. But one of the reasons he said is that, well, if all the men are destroyed, then the women are unprotected. If the women are unprotected, then there will be Vana Sankara in society. And as soon as Vana Sankara becomes prominent or starts to become more and more propagated, profuse, then everything goes down. So you see now, even now in the kids, they grow up, they're very violent by nature, some of these children. They kill their teachers, they kill their fellow students in the schools. Um, 
they take to all kinds of bad activities, even at a very early age. Statistics show, especially in the United Kingdom, that um, by the time a, per a kid is 11 years old, he has tried everything sinful. <laughs> this is not something that we're just making up. It's an actual statistic. So because people don't understand or don't have any knowledge or don't make any attempt to understand what is the purpose of human life, people generally live basically according to the urges of animal, animal nature. If you want to eat, you eat. If you want to have sex, you have sex. If you want to uh, speak uh, nasty to someone, you do that. In other words, everything is done by emotional urges or bodily urges. So this is, therefore, it is required that people come to a higher level of existence in order to understand how to live life and to achieve the goal of life. And therefore, when one takes shelter of the bona fide spiritual master, as Srila Prabhupada explains when he gives initiation, initiation means beginning. We are beginning, uh, we're getting onto the path, beginning our, our uh, sojourn back to Krishna and the spiritual world, back to our eternal home, away from this temporary material misery place which is full of miseries and that first connection is called Harinam initiation where the spiritual master agrees to take part of the disciples karma not all of it but part of it and initiation initiates him into chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and following certain principles after some time, when one is seen to be qualified in making the advancement, one starts to develop certain characteristics which are in the mode of goodness. Observed by the spiritual master, he, he sees that this person is ready for the next stage, and therefore that person becomes qualified to take second initiation, what we call it Brahminical initiation, and uh, then, as Prabhupada mentions, then that person is qualified to worship the deity in the temple, in the services of cooking for the Lord, and uh, doing the, what we say, puja, the various types of altar activities in relationship to the Lord. Prabhupada makes that point in the, in the purport here. So simply to take birth and simply to take birth in a good family doesn't make one qualified simply by birth. This is a contention that is still going on today, but years ago it was even more prominent that people were designated according to class. Now they have used another word called caste. Caste is somebody's, somebody's mental speculation there's no such word as caste system it's class <laughs> caste is something uh, it's another meaning so when one is born one is doesn't mean one becomes qualified according to the type of birth they take even if it's an elevated birth one has to show the symptoms so there is janma and there's karma Janma means birth and karma means activities and activities indicate certain characteristics of the living being. So one has to show by activities what are the qualifications one has and by those qualifications one can be classified according to the four class systems. The Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Sudra. Of course, in the Krishna consciousness movement, as Srila Prabhupada began the movement, he was educating people to come to the standard of Brahman. In other words, the second initiation was called Brahminical initiation. And that was the goal for people to aspire for in order to practice Krishna consciousness completely. As we mentioned earlier, 
the spiritual master takes part of the sinful reactions of the disciple on the first initiation. And only when the second initiation occurs, do the remaining amount of disciples' sinful reactions become, what we say, nullified. And therefore, one can practice devotional service free from one's past karma. And that allows this devotee to make faster progress on the path of devotional service. That is the mercy of Krishna coming through the spiritual master. But everything here comes back to one point. One has to be trained. There must be training in Brahminical culture because Brahminical culture is human culture. Prabhupada writes in the Bhagavatam in many verses, I was just reading that today in the ninth canto, that if Brahminical culture is not given prominence within a society, then the whole society will gravitate down to lower and lower standards of existence. So what is that Brahminical culture? We understand from Shastra what are the characteristics and activities of a Brahmana. Patan, patan, yajan, yajan, dana, pratigra. Let me say one thing before we continue on is that well, we are those in devotion in, in Krishna consciousness, we are above the Brahminical category because Brahman is within the Varnashram system and therefore it is considered to be material. It is the best of all material situations, but still it's material. As the mode of goodness is also the best, but it's still within the, within the material energy. So devotees who are practicing Krishna consciousness must be trained in the qualities that are characteristics of Brahminical activity and then engaged in devotional service. Because as Prabhupada says here, even if one is a Brahmin, he cannot deliver himself if he is not, not initiated after attaining a, to the Brahminical platform by process of initiation, then one has to perform devotional service to the Lord in the mood or within the context of developing and practicing the qualities of the mode of goodness, which eventually lead one to Sutta Sattva, which is the transcendental platform where one performs the activities that are completely spiritual and beyond, the, beyond all of the categories of the Vada, Varna and Ashram like that. So Varna and Ashram are a stepping stone to spiritual practice. But nowadays, because no one can sort out what is actually one's Varna anymore, how do we understand one's Varna, then we more or less engage people according to their different tendencies and natures, observe that and then, and then engage that according to those qualifications or qualities. And that way one may be doing the work of a sudra or a, a vaishya or a kshatriya or a brahmin, but if they're engaged in devotional service, then that is transcendental. Now that, that is above the Vanarshram system. As Lord Chaitanya said, Gopi Bharta Padavikamalayor Dasa Dasa Anudasa. I'm not Brahman, I'm not Kshatri, I'm not Vaishya, I'm not Sudra, I'm not Brahmachari, I'm not Vihasta, I'm not Vanaprasta, I'm not Sanyas. What am I? I am the servant of the servant of the servant of the damas of, of, of Raj. So what he's actually saying is that we are actually engaged in various activities, but we are above all these activities because devotional service is on the spiritual platform. And unless one comes to, unless one gets initiated by a bona fide spiritual master, their spiritual activities are just in the what is called the the uh, the seed stage. Just like when you plant 
a seed into the ground. If the ground is fertile, then the seed is there. And the watering process gradually brings a little sprout. As the sprout grows, then buds from the plant start to come. As the buds increase, they start to bloom. And then finally, they come into full bloom. And that is the beautiful flower that comes. So all of our devotees are beautiful flowers, but they're also in different stages of development as a plant is in different stages. So the watering process is hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord under the guidance of the direction of Krishna's representative, the bona fide spiritual master. So we want to have to understand that one birth is not enough. One has to take second birth and eventually one has to come to the stage of third birth, which is Brahminical initiation, in order to complete the process. When Prabhupada was asked, is it important for second initiation, he gave the example of um, a student going to school. And he said there's different grades within the school. So, different, so the student, he's in one grade or she's in one grade and she's learning the subjects. She becomes qualified and passes and then moves to the next. In the same way, we have to go from first initiation to eventually qualify ourselves for a second initiation and then ultimately um, become fully Krishna conscious like that. And of course, there is another initiation and that is generally for those who take the sannyas order of life. And so that's another level of initiation, the sannyas order of life like that. And then one uh, dedicates their life doesn't get involved with any uh, worldly activities and simply preaches the glories of the Lord by traveling through different places around the world. So here, the idea is uh, uh, to satisfy the Supreme Lord. In other words, to make the Supreme Lord happy by our uh, activities. And so, the preliminaries are set here, and one has to get initiated by the spiritual master. So we all should think, where am I now? Am I initiated or not initiated? And um, so the first step in moving in that direction is to seek out the shelter of a bona fide spiritual master, and that is called aspiring for initiation and that is the preliminary stage where as it's mentioned in the Srila Hari Bhakti Vilas that in that scripture it mentions that during this period before initiation and taking shelter of a bona fide spiritual master there is mutual uh, what's the word Prabhupada uses mutual uh, Uh, I don't know, he uses an interesting word, mutual uh, evaluation. That's the, uh, in other words, the spiritual master observes to see if the devotee is qualified and is becoming qualified. And the disciple observes to see if this person is actually my spiritual master. Do I want to accept this person as my spiritual master? And so there is a mutual testing. That was probably said, mutual testing. One should test the spiritual master by asking relevant questions. The spiritual master should also test the aspiring devotee by giving them certain services to carry out just to test their quality of surrender and dedication to the process. Okay, so we learn a lot from this verse. It's really one we could uh, speak on this verse from different angles of vision. It's such a very uh, diverse uh, verse in the sense that it covers a lot of areas, but the main area is that well, one has to come to the stage of devotional service by following the process as mentioned here. 
Okay, so we'll stop here and see if there's any comments or questions. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for uh, enlightening us about the sanskaras, which are so important. And uh, the most important thing I learned today that uh, um, you said that uh, as we progress in our material life from grade one to grade two, similarly, we should uh, uh, be uh, go to the second initiation after the first, because after the first, we sometimes becomes like, uh, okay, it will take time to get second, but we should try to go to the second level as we try to progress in the material world. Similarly, we should try to progress in the spiritual life also. So thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. So, yeah. It uh, gives me a hope that uh, I will try to progress myself. So thank you so much, Maharaj. And uh, now I will request devotees if they have any questions, they can ask now. I will pose a question and see what devotees respond to. What causes one to hesitate or to block or to feel a little hesitant of accepting a spiritual master. What are the things that we face that causes us to be a little bit reluctant, hesitant, doubtful from accepting a bona fide spiritual master? What are the things where we get challenged by that causes us to remain where we are? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, Manisha, Dandavar Pranam. Hare Krishna. Um, for me, the biggest thing, fear is, um, you know, what I spoke to last time I asked a question, like not being able to carefully and qualitatively fulfill all of the vows and serve uh, my Guru Maharaj to the utmost, like, you know, um, best quality and care that's my fear so one of the things that we understand is that whatever fear is based on what we estimate as a lack of dedication can also be overcome by association with devotees and also through the process of educating oneself in the process of of devotional service. In other words, understanding. So mostly through association and by taking direction in that association on, on the principles of devotional service. Uh, as we make a step towards Krishna, Krishna also responds by taking 10 steps towards us. In other words, he provides the opportunities for us to, to move forward as we make the effort on our level. So we don't see those opportunities coming until we actually start moving in that direction. And that's Krishna conscious, is that the mercy will come as we make the efforts. <laughs> The qualifications come as we make the efforts. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Dhanavad Pranam Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Dhanavad Pranam Guru Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, I joined late. Uh, Maharaj, my question is that, is it necessary to take second initiation? Prabhupada answered that question. <clears throat> When that was, um, and I have the actual quote, which is Prabhupada's response to the question. And it's the example we used, <clears throat> just like you go to school, you don't finish school by entering school. You have to go through the different grades. Only when you go through all the grades that you actually get your diploma. So in the same way, one has to complete the process to give you a, a little historical background, um, initiation 
initially was only Brahman initiation. And that goes back about 150 years, or maybe not, about 100 years or more. And at the time of Bhakti Vinoda Kaur and Bhakti Siddhanta, people were claiming to become Brahman just by putting on a thread or just by receiving some kind of initiation. So actually Harinam initiation is more like a testing ground to show one's sincerity and qualities where they can complete the initiation process. So I believe it was Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati who divided the initiation process into two. Before it was only one, and that was Brahminical initiation. That was called Upanaya Samskara. And followed Srila Prabhupada, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Srila Prabhupada followed that process, knowing the age of Kali was like that. And I see that in my own um, experiences working with disciples, they take first initiation and they can't, they can't go forward. They get stuck there and they stay there for years, sometimes 10, 15 years without taking the next initiation. Because as Prabhupada said, when it comes to second initiation, we are very strict. We're a little bit more lenient when it comes to giving the first initiation. But then again, we have to observe how that person is responding in terms of taking the instructions and and making advancement. So we find people sometimes take first initiation and then they don't move. They just somehow or other vacillate on the level. And so therefore the GBC, the Governing Body Commission of the ISKCON Society, about three or four years ago, made it a requirement that in order to receive second initiation, in ISKCON, one should have Bhakti Shastra accreditations. That means one has to go through the educational process of studying and taking tests and receiving a, a accreditation based on one's efforts. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, Brahminical initiation is the complete initiation. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Dandutma Maharaj. Is that okay? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Dandutma Maharaj. Okay. Do you have anything to, to say in response? Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh -huh. Maharaj Dandavas Pranam. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Like, uh, Prabhu, I am not yet initiated. So, like, how to find the guru? I'm not yet initiated. Find guru. So, how do we find the perfect guru who, whom should we, like, approach and get initiated? How do we get that perfect affinity towards the guru? And how do we get initiated? The process of finding a spiritual master. Hmm. Well, of course, it says that when they... The candidate is ready, Krishna will send you the guru. It says that when you look for Krishna, Krishna sends himself in the form of the spiritual master who then brings you to Krishna. So there is an eagerness that has to be there that I, yes, I want to make a solution to all the problems of life. I want to go back to Godhead. If I understand that one has to take a spiritual master. So if you come to that platform of eagerness, if you don't have that eagerness, then it's not going to happen. You have to be eager, very eager. And that eagerness can be awakened in the association of devotees. So in the association of devotees, we become inspired to take the process. That's why Rupa Goswami is to say, Sadas, Shraddha, Sadhu, Sangha, Bhajana, Kriya. 
he, in the nine pra stages of bhakti, he mentions the first three, I mentioned the first three. Adao, strata, adao means, strata means faith. Uh, Sadhu Sangha means association of devotees and Bhajana Mikriya means taking shelter of a bona fide spiritual master and working under his guidance. That is the third stage. And that is the beginning where we can get to the next stage, an art nivritti getting rid of all of our unwanted habits that are blocking our path to pure love of God. So how do you find a spiritual master? Well, in the association of devotees, it becomes easy. Right now, we're not able to associate so much due to this particular time period we're in. So one, one thing you can do is associate by hearing from different persons who are spiritual masters and listening very carefully to their vakya, their words, and getting inspired accordingly. So after carefully hearing for a period of time, maybe six months to a year, one starts to understand, oh, this person seems to be the person who I'd like to take shelter of. In other words, you start to understand through your own experience that this person is awakening in you through his words, you, the desire to serve the Lord. Krishna himself makes a very clear statement in the Bhagavad Gita in the fourth chapter. He said, Tad viri pati patena paripasyena sevaya upadeksyanti te jnanam jnanina tabvadarshanaha. Approach a bona fide spiritual master, inquire from him submissively, rendering service to self realized soul, can impart knowledge to you because he has seen the truth. So three principles are mentioned there. Uh, pranipat, Pariprasseva, and Sevaya. Pranipat means falling flat, humble. One cannot approach a bona fide spiritual master if one is proud of one's position. One has to approach in a mood of humility and Pariprasnena means inquiring. One has to ask relevant questions and then one has to be eager to serve, and that is called sevaya. So if we study that verse, 434 in Bhagavad Gita, Srila Prabhupada's purport outlines all the details. And Krishna in the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, in instructing Uddhava, gives the same instructions in a very more and more complete form. But back to your back to the simple answer. The simple answer is to hear from various persons who are in the position to uh, to to uh, represent. In other words, they are bona fide spiritual masters. So, in an ISKCON society, we have many more than. 150, maybe 200 persons who are in that role of accepting disciples. And you don't have to choose someone in your, uh, your local area. You can choose anyone who you feel inspired by. But it takes some time to get that inspiration clear. So therefore, extended hearing is required. One should hear regularly for a long time. Thank you, Maharaj. That was really helpful. And uh, like uh, the spiritual master should be, a, can, can he be a Gruhastha or should he be a, a senior master or like any like yeah. difference in uh, terms of experience? And yeah, a, a spiritual master can be a Gruhastha. He can be a, he can be a sannyas. He can even be a Brahmachari. You can be any one of those three ashrams. We have devotees who are who are grihastas, who are spiritual masters. We have many grihastas in our ISKCON society. 
most of our spiritual masters are sannyas, and we even have a few brahmacharis. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Yeah, it's not about, it's not, like we mentioned, it's not about uh, the position within the, within the, uh, the ashram. It's about qualifications. So there shouldn't be any fear because you have this testing period for one year or more where you can test your, your spiritual master and see if that person is the person you want to take initiation from. And Srila Rupa Goswami clearly explains in Next of the Devotion that the first stage is aspiring for the spiritual master, taking shelter. Initiation is the second stage. It's not the first. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. Um, Maharaj, about the second initiation, um, sometimes, you know, uh, when there is no temple, or there are no, there is no deities. So generally people don't recommend second initiation because the first question they ask is because there are no deities, you don't do any deity worship, why you want to take second initiation? That question also comes sometimes from the temple authorities. So how do devotees take that one as how do we take that one well Prabhupada commented on that that's not that's not the reason for taking second initiation there's a discussion and i remember the discussion Prabhupada said he said he said uh, sometimes we give one devotee was saying to Prabhupada, we give second initiation because uh, the temples need a, a pujari or someone Brahminic on this Prabhupada said not like that. That is not the qualification or the reason. But we might say what the temple authority says, you know, doing Brahminical service. So preaching is also Brahminical service. So one can also preach. And uh, so, but, you know, the temples think, well, we don't have, we don't have any need, but that doesn't help the aspiring devotee. The need of the temple doesn't really help the devotee go to the next stage. So we give Brahminical, and they, but then, one has to develop Brahminical qualities before or while they're, they're going through that stage. So Brahminical qualities are really the indication whether a person is ready for a second initiation or not. In other words, they should be initiated for some period of time and then they're showing the qualities of a Brahmana. And one of the qualities, and that's mentioned in the uh, Bhagavad Gita, the 18th chapter, Samo Dhamma Tithas Saucham, like that, peacefulness, austerity, cleanliness, uh, simplicity, knowing the scriptures, be able to understand the knowledge that one is reading. In other words, Jnana Vigyana, Astakam, Brahma Karma Sabha Religiousness. Yeah. Samodhamas Tapao Sao Cham Shantri Arjameva Jnana Vijnanam Astikam Brahma Karma Swabhava Cham. Peacefulness, self control. That means controlling the mind and senses. Peaceful, not, not disturbed by the changing of the material energy. Austerity, uh, performing the recommended austerities that are given in the sh Shastras, austerities of the mind, austerities of the body, austerities of speech. Purity, 
In other words, motivation towards devotional service is the main thing. Tolerance, honesty, not sophistry, honesty. Um, knowledge and wisdom and religiousness, these are the natural qualities by which the Brahman, Brahman is for. And in the Sanat, Sanat Sujata, uh, four more qualities are added onto those. So in that, in that particular treatise, 12 were mentioned. But three so, more given. So then Mara's follow-up question is like, sometimes, you know, we, we see people are, you know, kind of preaching or doing some seva, then you know, they go and take second initiation and all of a sudden they, they just stop doing services. They, there's no motivation in them. And the people who are behind them, looking at them, they think, okay, you just can take initiation and just do whatever you want. You know, you just no need to be so active in devotional service. That demotivates the devotees who are looking at them. <clears throat> and the temple authorities also get the second thought. Do we need, do we recommend other people for second initiation or not? Because we already recommended this set of people and not everybody is doing devotional service. They just stopped it after taking initiation, you know, deity services or anything. So then how do we balance that between the devotees who took it and not doing as per the expectations and devotees who are motivated but demotivated by looking at them? Yeah, we, one should not be punished because of someone else's failures. <laughs> That's not, <laughs> we have to judge each person individually. And we also have to be, as leaders, we have to be, we have to open up the opportunities for people to do the service and give, give come create those services or offer those services. So I remember when I was at New Vrindavan, we had, um, we had, uh, we had 42 deities every day we had to dress, 42 deities. And six sects of Jagannath, we had, uh, we had five, four sets of Radha Krishna, we had four sets of Gornitai, four, we had, we had Nathji, we had Shalagram, we had Govardhan, we had Pallad Vishringa, and still there, but not as many deities. So one of the things we were doing is we were canvassing for devotees who were second initiated to come forward and take on some service. Uh, but it's up to the devotees to do it. And so if they take a second initiation and they're not performing the activities of a Brahman, then as they say, what is the use, you know? We, again, we come back to Janma and Karma, or we come to that one is judged by their qualifications and their activities, not simply by their designated position. A person can have a position, but that doesn't mean that they're qualified. They have to show, according to that position, their qualifications and their activities. That's the indication. So it's up to the temple authorities to evaluate that and then to inspire people to come forward. And people who don't want to come forward after being initiated, uh, what can we do? We can try to somehow or other uh, find ways to get them involved again, but ultimately it's up to them. You know? And you know, even, even the point of first initiation, if you're, if you're first initiated and you're not following your, your initiation vows, you're not initiated. You may have a name, you may have your remembrance of your ceremony, but you, in essence, you're not initiated because you're not performing the activities that require you to be to be considered initiated. <laughs> you can wear whatever you you know want to wear, but you have to show. That's what really is the criteria for understanding so we shouldn't be try to punish people or not or, or what we say uh, don't allow people who are sincere because of what happened previously by others uh, that doesn't really balance out 
Each person has to be given an opportunity accordingly. Thank you so much, Maris. But so what nice. help? What what makes it easy is training. If devotees are not trained, then a lot of times they can't come up to the standard. Nice to meet you again, Braja Bhakti. My obeisances to you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mara. So happy to see you. I'm waiting. When will you come to Columbus again? <laughs> it's been so long, Mara. So Columbus. I, there's a lot of Columbuses on the map. I'm thinking which one. <laughs> Columbus, Ohio, Maharaj, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada, all glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, so, um, after getting Brahman initiation, we get a lot of responsibility and we have to be very serious about all the devotional service. Yeah, devotional service is ser serious business. It's the most serious thing. It's not something that we should take you know, whimsically or lightly. We have been in the material world for how many thousands of births, maybe even millions, and we're still suffering. <laughs> life after life, Mitche Mayaravase, Kachu, Kachu Hebe Bububai, Kachu Beise. Jeev Jeet Krishna Das, hey Vishwash. Kali Dana Dukanai, Bhakti Vinota Kaur sings this song. Uh, you know, how many lives would be just suffering in these waves of material energy? Once in a while we get a good position somewhere within the material energy, but then again, that changes. As Prabhupada said, you may be a human being in this life, but you never know what, what your next life will be. So in order to get out of this cycle of birth and death, disease, old age, miseries coming from higher powers, miseries coming from other living entities, miseries coming from our own body and mind, the world is, is connected, is Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. He says, um, Dukalayam Ashashvatam, that this place is temporary and it's miserable. So yeah, it's a miserable place. <laughs> Unless we understand, I think we it doesn't hard, it's not really hard to understand that. It's a, it's a miserable place. We want to be free. But we can't be. We want to be happy, but there's so many, so many things that will dis will interfere with our becoming happy. We want to love, but at the same time, we can't even find people who will accept our love. <laughs> it's just a very difficult place to live. It's not meant the way we are here just to make a solution to the problems. We are here to learn how to get out of here. Just like when you put into a jail, you do your time and that becomes your rectification and then you are set free. So the jail of material life is reforming our, our mentality of being averse to Krishna and now getting back to Krishna through the process of devotional service. We can stay here as long as we want. There's no limit how long you can stay. But there's no limit also how fast you can get out. You can also get out very fast if you're determined. We just have to become sincere 
and serious, that's all. If you're sincere, it's not a matter of qualifications, it's a matter of sincerity. If you're really sincere, I want to go back to Godhead, I want to love Krishna, then as soon as you make that vow and you work towards that, Krishna will do amazing things to bring you there. He'll make it, he'll make it easy for you if you become determined. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much for your class. It was very, very instructive. Uh, someone is asking question on the chat box. Uh, Flavior Mataji, would you like to read your own question? Yes, Mataji. I'm so sorry. Um, um, please accept my humble obeisances, Maharaj. I wanted to ask, if we are seeking initiation, um, is there some place special that we should be looking to know who we should start listening to, to, uh, you know, to see who we may be connecting with? Because there's so many different teachers and speakers, but how will we know who exactly is someone that is a spiritual master? Is there some site maybe we can initially go to and start to listen to these particular um, swamis to know? Well, on our, on our ISKCON media, there are devotees who are in that position who are speaking every day, giving classes, writing books, and preaching in different ways. So um, we need to see who we feel inspired by, that's all. And there's where you start. So in my, I recommend that devotees find at least maybe two, the most three different persons and hear from those three and gradually start to understand and then eventually come to that person who you feel is your spiritual master. But the point is we shouldn't waste time trying to think about this all the time. We should, it's, we're not in a hurry to get initiated, but we're in a hurry to find a, a shelter. Once we find shelter, then the initiation process will unfold naturally. Yes, I got that. Yeah, and so, so there are so many devotees every day are giving classes online all over the ISKCON world. You just have to, you know, tune into that. Yes. There's many, there's many who have written books, too. You can read their books. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Hare Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you. Thank you for this, again, another wonderful lecture stressing the importance of initiation, taking shelter, following the process, becoming sincere and serious. My question is, what if we have Kshatriya qualities? What we, if we are fiery, we are determined, we are energetic, we are not quiet, peaceful, this, that, not Brahmanical. Can we still take Brahmanical initiation? And if we do, do we have to change into a Brahmana after that? No. No. Uh, it's up to the spiritual master and by, by observing the devotee, how to engage the devotee. You have to remember, devotional service is above the four varnas. Brahman, Kshatriya. So if, you ha if one has Kshatriya tendencies, then they can serve in that way. If one has Brahminical tendencies, they can serve in that way. If one has Vaishas tendencies, they can serve in that way. So how you serve is your connection with Krishna, according to how best you can serve. And that is given by the spiritual master or given by the temple authorities. This is something that needs to be worked out. But still, everyone has to take uh, second initiation, pernitical initiation. 
So someone may some will work as a brahmana, some will serve as a kshatriya, some will serve as a vaishya. Because this is daivi vanashram, it's not just material vanashram. Daivi means transcendental. If all you have to do is listen to Prabhupada's lectures on this, uh, the best lecture that I found the most inspiring was a, uh, it's a uh, morning, I think it's a morning walk conversation. Uh, March 14th, 1974 in Vrindavan. And he's mostly discussing with one devotee, Rindananda Maharaj. Uh, and then again, Prabhupada made other lectures similar. He talks about the whole system of development. But wherever you are, just do some service, that's all. Uh, I think I'm a mixture of Kshatriya and Brahmana Guru Maharaj. So which aspect should be stressed on? <laughs> we'll talk about that some other time. <laughs> okay, thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glories to Srila Prabhupada and our glories to you. Uh, you mentioned uh, to listen to two or three uh, devotees' uh, lectures, and uh, uh, it, it's important when someone is looking for a spiritual master, or uh, it can cause any confusion in the future if someone uh, listens to uh, many devotees. Too many. Yeah, one should also listen to Srila Prabhupada along with his disciples too. If you listen to Prabhupada, everything will be clear and then you'll be able to understand your spiritual master easily. As we mentioned, and this is a, this is a fact, when the disciples ready, the guru appears, then you have to recognize Uh, I see. Um, I, I'm just uh, uh, still confused that uh, in my case, for example, if uh, if I I listen, uh, maybe I have three or four or five uh, different uh, devotees, disciples of uh, Srila Prabhupada, whom I like uh, their classes, so. Uh, is it too much so I should focus more on, on Srila Prabhupada or just a uh, few, uh, I mean, not, not so many of them or? Well, it's better if you focus more on less because you'll get more that way. This is just the, the restless mind going everywhere, that's all. Oh, I see. <laughs> Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, someone is asking how to contact you. Maybe they they might be aspiring from you. Um, um, Lavanya, you're there today? Oh, Radha Bhakti is there also. Radha Bhakti, you're there. I saw Radha Bhakti's name before. I don't see it. Don't yeah. The question came from Shriya Kalariya. Okay. Radha Bhakti or Lavanya, either one. Mm 
Pataji, the person who asked the question is not in the call. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, someone, whoever knows my email, and if you know that person, you can give the email. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam, thank you for such an important class. Uh, this is, it is a very good constant reminder for us. Uh, Maharaj, I have a question. Uh, Please, yeah. Okay. Uh, so Maharaj, uh, what should we give more importance to? Uh, our own personal sadhana or uh, services? Well, mm -hmm. sadhana is the principle which is that inspires one in the direction of one's service. That's fundamental. And it's also the foundation for purification. Sadhana is hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And service means to carry out certain duties in relationship to one's uh, instructions given by the spiritual master or by the temple authorities. Or if you are living at home, then you have your also, you have your, your service there. But for those who emphasize sadhana over service, they can also stagnate and not make enough advancement because Service actually helps us to develop the qualities that we need in order to approach Krishna. And uh, such as humility, tolerance, and a desire to please the Lord. In other words, by service, we're actually offering our energy, time, and abilities to connect with the Lord. Um, sadhana is hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And so if we emphasize sa service over sadhana, after some time, and it may also happen, it does happen, one will see their activities as simply a burden. In other words, it become a chore. So more or less service is more or less an emanation of the quality of our sadhana. When sadhana is good, then our service is strong also. We might like to do things, and that's just our nature, but that won't last in the long run if we don't hear and chant nicely the glories of the Lord. We'll, fall, we'll start to slip from the quality of our service. Thank you so much. It should be a nice, there should be a healthy balance between both of them. Yes. Yes, that's a perfect answer, Manas. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Koti Koti Tanvar Pranam, very, very inspiring class. Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Thank you, Maharaj, Koti Koti Tanvar Pranam. Devo. Koti Koti Dandavats. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. I just wanted to say thank you for such a beautiful class. It's always so special on Fridays to be in class with you because you have such a lovely way of explaining things and um, making them very clear. So thank you very much. I, I very much appreciate your classes. Thank, thank you. you. My obeisance is to you. I'm glad you are coming every Friday. <laughs> <laughs> And probably every day. <laughs> okay, so if there's no more questions, we can. 
Yeah, Hare Krishna Maharaj, there is a one question on chat box is asking, um, uh, can we do cooking seva at the temple even though we don't have second initiation? We can cook at home, but cooking in the temple, as Prabhupada says, should be the second initiation. At home you can do, no problem. Uh, we cannot cook for uh, temple deities, right, Maharaj? Uh, that's what Prabhupada said. He set that standard. Some temples have lowered the standard, but that's not Prabhupada's instructions. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada felt that these instructions were so important that he included them into a Srimad Bhagavatam verse. Cooking for the Lord has to be, the consciousness has to be very, very developed. If you're cooking for the Lord and you actually start to think in any way that I can't wait to taste this, then you're not qualified to cook. Oh. Yeah. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah, be cooking for the Lord means it's for the pleasure of the Lord, and if the Lord is merciful, then he will offer some prashad to me. But one should not even think like that. One should just focus on trying to make it as nice as they can, and, and according to how best everything should be done. The atmosphere should be very clean. We should be very clean. And that means we should be fresh. And at the same time, we should also um, understand what to prepare for Krishna according to the different times of the days. Bello holo damodara hoiste a corno, and luci chini saras puri lado rasa bali. So that song, Baja Bakada, Patsal, is a beautiful song. Uh, when I used to do duty deity worship in New Vrindavan, I would put the offering onto the altar and come out and say my Gayatri, and then we would sing that song together with, other, with a few other devotees, Bajabakara Vatsala Shigura Nehi. Because Krishna is taking his Rajbok, and so on Rajbok should be the biggest offering. And there, so we sing that beautiful bhajan. So it's a beautiful, uh, you know, Krishna's eating. As he said, asnami vaya tattvaraha, patram kushman phalam toyam, yome bhakta pranasyati taraham bhakta uparitam asnami. Rambha translates that word asnami to I eat. You offer and I eat it. He's eating. He's eating. He's actually eating. But Krishna's senses are interchangeable, so he can eat with his eyes. He doesn't have to eat like we eat, he can eat with any of the senses of the body, but he's eating when the offering is done to his uh, with with devotion. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for a wonderful class, Maharaj. Uh, we can't those who are not initiated, Brahman initiated, they can't cook, but they can help the devotees who are cooking in the temple, no Maharaj. Yes, that's true. Yeah, that, that is true. And Prabhupada said everything should be cooked in ghee. <laughs> that's another thing. Okay, so we'll stop here. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, um, some some devotees they are vegan so how they can cook in ghee then 
and of uh, also the ghee we use here is not um, is not ahimsa it it's coming from the cow but if uh, the cow is going to get killed uh, anyway later on or their ba her babies are going to get killed like that so yes. <laughs> make your own ghee that's all even if you have to buy, yeah. buy if you have but, to buy, buy butter from the store make your own ghee no but that butter is coming not ayunsa uh, that's why we are means we use lot of ghee in uh, temples that's what i see and all the ghee is coming from the store and all do you know the do you, know, do you know the gbc resolution uh what's that the gbc has given a resolution last year that all temples all over the world by the year 2022 then by gor purnima 2022 should be offering only ahimsa products like milk cheese ghee that's no. a resolution yeah so yeah. that's a resolution oh. that's what i want maharaj i want my own cow is yes. everybody has their own cell phone their own house everything is uh, personal but cow is not personal and cow is supposed to be one person is having at least should have one cow i can i some people might like not like what i'm going to say but i'll say it anyway <laughs> <laughs> and that is that your gita nagri farm they are they are marketing the milk from the cows that they have and they have an industry and they're selling sending milk all over the united states the only problem is it's very expensive so the devotees are a little bit and even some of the temples are hesitant yeah. to buy it because it's expensive but if you want quality pay for it and the money is going to devotees anyway so you could be you can contribute to devotional service by spending your money maybe it's a little bit more than you expect but um you'll get quality and at the same time you can support the their efforts to make more and more milk and milk products so you you and Agri is doing it i <laughs> yes mar yes maharaj i went to kitanagri we stayed there for a week but uh, the question is they are selling the milk as it is they just take the milk from cow and they just sell it they there is no way they can get the ghee <clears throat> the ghee we are using mm -hmm. in the temples or in our preparation it's way more it needs lot of lot of milk actually what the stores they do they separate ghee and milk and they sell the milk uh, separately and they sell the ghee separate but gita nagri cannot do that this it, it's a big process you know and that's not you know that's what that's not supposed to do in vedic culture vedic culture uh, in like uh, we just give the milk as it is and then we make ghee in the kitchen like that so so gita nagri cannot sell ghee that much ghee gita nagri cannot supply they we talk to them and uh, we we just wanted to take ghee and go they said this is not ahimsa ghee whatever you are getting here they also uh, means demand it so much they have to take the butter from store and make the ghee and then sell no guru maharaj hi krishna guru maharaj please accept my humble obeisances i'm sorry to interrupt this is prem kishori guru maharaj gita nagri is my second home may i please uh, address this if you allow Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So, Guru Maharaj, uh, first is the expense of the the price of the products is high because, uh, I, and I work with them, so I know uh, that the price of the milk products are cheaper in the market because those uh, dairy farms are collaborating with the slaughterhouses. So the price is distributed between the meat. of the cow and the product that the cow is giving that is how the price is reduced in the market for other milk and milk products if the nagri is not doing it if the nagri is independently functioning and not collaborating with any slaughterhouse anywhere in the whole world 
that is why we absorb the whole price and the prices are very reasonable if actually it should be higher but because of um, because of uh, because we want to cater it's if you really do the math it is cheaper based on that we are not collaborating with any third party second is the butter and ghee gida nagri if if the whole world is going to support the eco farms we can have enough number of cows to have enough number of milk to have enough amount of ghee for everyone we were making ghee few years ago but the demand for organic and ahinsa milk went so sky high that we have around 21 milking cows right now and the sub, and the demand is sky high some people uh, there are dhruva prabhu was telling the other day there are about 100 people in the wait list waiting for their even first supply of milk bottle there is so much demand so if we can support the gida nagri farm we can have more than 21 milking cows and we can have the butter and we can and gida nagri milk is pasteurized but if you boil it it gives enough number of cream i will be so happy to send the picture of the cream that is stored in my freezer and how much milk can be made so we are making ghee but it's only enough for our damodar right now but if we can have more cows we can have enough milk we can in we can churn the uh, cream out of the milk and we can make the uh, the ghee for everyone just needs the support yes yes that that's what mataji i was saying that uh, ghee is not enough for you know it's a, but it is they give uh, i mean some milk their their own ghee they give to dada uh, damodar i saw that yeah if we give them support then they'll expand more and more that's the that's the main thing yeah so we're we're moving in that direction and gidanagari is leading the way but we need to we need to somehow or other inspire other farms to do the same thing yeah we're still in the process so when it comes to us we just have to just make make a little sacrifice and pay a little bit more but as as prem kishore you were saying the demand is so high that they can't keep up with it so. thank you guru maharaj for for those who don't know prem kishore worked worked in works in gidanagari regularly and stayed there for many years working with the whole project Okay so we'll stop there thank you very much Thank you Shri Guru Maharaj so sorry to interrupt um can Prema Kisori Mataji or anyone please post a link Guru Maharaj on your Facebook page the donation how i can give donation for Gita Nagari cow farm Thank you Shri can help with that Guru Maharaj i'll send it in the email the CMS conference email is it okay I I don't get that email. Please request Lavanya Mataji to add me. Hare Krishna. We can add you to the conference. That's not a problem. Hey, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Okay. Dandavats to all the devotees. Shila Prabhupad ki jai. And tomorrow, on our regular. daily call will be talking about shila prabhupad's vision for iskon which a lot of it we touched on today um okay hari krishna dandavat maharaj okay so thank you so much uh, devotees for joining thank you so much maharaj for giving your valuable association so we will offer obeisances to maharaj now vancham kalpavrishya ke paas sindhu evcha pita naam bab me bhu vaishnav bhu namo nama anant koti vaishnav vande ki jai gantra shrimad bhagavatam ki jai shri la prabhu pad ki jai his holiness chandramauli swami maharaj ki jai thank you so much maharaj hari krishna thank you maharaj hari krishna thank you maharaj dandavat pranam hari krishna aur premanand